In this video, we will talk about antiderivatives. So we'll start with a simple example. So suppose we have a function f of x equals 3. So this is a constant function. And our question, what function or functions have f of x as their derivative. Um, and in this case, we can answer the question very simply by just thinking geometrically. So since the derivative of a function is the slope of the tangent line, we want a function whose slope at any point is this constant of 3. So uh, that means that the function could be linear. So examples of such functions could be something like, I'll call it g of x here, say 3x, that has slope 3 at any point, or g of x being, say, 3x plus 1 also has slope 3 at any point. And so no matter what constant I add on here, it doesn't change what the slope of the function is at any given point. So I really could have added any constant, plus 1, plus 2, minus a million, doesn't matter. Okay, so all the functions, though, have two things in common. There's some sort of constant, and then also they would all have this 3x bit. Okay, so the answer, really, to our question is any function of the form 3x plus c where c is any real number. So hence, there are infinitely many correct answers. And the reason that it's infinitely many is because we have infinitely many choices for the constant uh, value c. Uh, so in general, we just write 3x plus c, understanding that that c could represent some sort of constant. Um, OK, so now that will give us to um, warm up question one. What is the antiderivative of f of x equals 5? This is the same as asking what function has 5 as its derivative. Um, okay, so let's move on to a new, uh, new white space here, and we're going to look at something slightly more exotic, uh, which is when the function is not constant. So for this example, I'm going to choose f of x to be 2x plus 3. And we want to answer the same question as we did before. Um, so I want to come up with a function that has this as its derivative. Uh, and there's a couple ways that we could at least start. The first is to notice, well, we already know what to do with the plus 3 that's tacked on to the end, because we just did that uh, a moment ago. But the 2x part, eh, not so clear what to do this time, because that's not a constant function. Um, so if we go back to um, the power rule, Okay, so this is what we were learning about um, in section 2.2. Uh, the power rule basically says if you have uh, that the derivative of x to some number is n x to the n minus 1. So what we essentially need to use here 
is to think about this backwards to come up with a backwards version of the power rule. So uh, I want a function whose derivative is 2x plus 3. So let's worry about the 2x part first. Okay, so what function has derivative 2x? We'll worry about the plus 3 later. Well, from the power rule, we could probably guess that if you take the derivative of something and the power drops, if I want to have my function after I've taken the derivative be 2x, then I probably need to start with something of the form x squared. Okay, so let's just say our guess would be something like g of x equals x squared. Then let's test it out. The derivative of g of x is, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so we got lucky here that we guessed something correct, uh, and we got the 2x that we wanted. And how do we know that the derivative of g of x is 2x? Uh, a couple of ways. Uh, one would be we've done the definition of the derivative, so we could have gone through and do the limit definition, uh, and we uh, would get the 2x. Uh, the other is that we've seen the derivative of quadratic functions like x squared often enough that we could have probably guessed that this was the case. Um, and so, um, so there we go. Uh, now, as for the plus 3, we already know what to do there. Okay, so, uh, so the answer to our real question was what function, or the, the question itself was what function has its derivative as 2x plus 3? Well, if we, for example, did, let me call it h of x, is x squared plus 3x plus a constant, then this function's derivative should be 2x plus 3. Uh, and if we use the power rule, we can double check that. Um, we still need this constant because like before there were there are infinitely many answers uh, and if we take the derivative of h so if we go backwards well the derivative of x squared is 2x the derivative of 3x is 3 and the derivative of a constant is 0 so we just get our 2x plus 3 which matches what we started with okay so this brings us to warm-up question 2 Okay, find the antiderivative of, uh, let's call this, say, g of x equals 5x minus 4. All right, look forward to seeing you all in class.